Hey there, Submidian here, and welcome back to Marvel Legendary. Last time we defeated Emma Frost, and we're down to 82 masterminds remaining. We're getting there. Uh, that should take like half a year ish. Yeah? Yeah, sounds about right. About half a year, assuming I never lose, which is unlikely, but you never know. Who are we facing today? Today we're facing Darren Cross. He has a Bank Conqueror 6. He always leads Cross Technologies. Master Strike, Darren Cross double crosses each player, and then he transforms. And on the other side, he is the Yellow Jacket. He has microscopic size changing 2 tech. Master Strike, each player discards an instinct hero or size changing hero or gains a wound. And then Yellow Jacket transforms. Cool. And his scheme is the Deadlands Hordes Charge the Wall. Set up eight twists, add an extra villain group. Twist, each villain simultaneously charges two spaces. Play another card from the villain deck. Evil wins when the number of escaped villains equals the number of players plus six. So that would be eight. We're facing the Omens of Ragnarok, uh, also an additional villain group, and the Spider Slayers. And we're playing as Groot, Speedball, Venomized Doctor Strange, Rocket Raccoon and Party Thor. Got some tech in here. Rocket Raccoon's got a decent amount of tech, I think. Maybe Groot does too. I don't know. I don't know what Groot does. This might be my first time seeing this Groot. So having tech is nice. Uh, I need instinct too, or size changing. I don't think any of these guys have size changing. Let's see what happens. Demons of Limbo is our extra villain group. Got a 4 4 and a 5 3 split for the recruit. Size changing tech. Fight a hero in the HQ loses all size changing abilities and then gains size changing tech this turn. Okay. Alright, what do I want to do with this 5 recruit? I obviously want to buy the 5 cost card, right? All right, Party Thor is the recruit high cost stuff hero. That's interesting. I'm not sure how well it's going to work with like everything. Look at this card. Um, I would like to talk about this card. This is one attack. When you draw a new hand of cards at the end of this turn, draw an extra card and it costs three. This card is for Recruit, patrol the bridge if it's empty, then when you draw a new hand of cards at the end of this turn, draw an extra card. So this card costs one more than this card, has no attack, has a requirement that the bridge needs to be empty, and came out in an expansion a year later than this card did. Please explain to me why this card exists. Why? They don't. She doesn't even synergize with having a lot of cards in her hand in a turn. Why? I don't understand. Okay, I've been distracted. What am I doing here? Uh, there's a lot of Guardians of the Galaxy stuff going on over here. I could go for a Guardians thing on the left, and on the right just buy high cost cards with Party Thor. Okay. What is this team that he is a part of? Wumbo? Wumbo team? What is this team? This doesn't have lists of teams, right? I have no 
idea what this team is. I don't really care. I'm just going to call it the Wumbo team if it comes up. Alright, we had a villainous weapon. I don't quite remember what those do. Reveal from the villain deck. This card is captured by the closest villain and adds its attack value to that villain. If there are no villains in the city, KO the weapon instead. Villainous weapons do not count as villains. When a villain with a villainous weapon is escaped, kill the villainous weapon to the mastermind. When you defeat a villain or mastermind with villainous weapons, put them in your discard pile as artifacts. Villainous weapon in player decks do not give their printed attack when played. Only their artifact effect have zero cost, have no color or hero class, and don't count as hero cards or villain cards. Okay. So this guy is at net 9 now. He's going to be a little hard to deal with. I'm going to try the Party Thor thing. I don't... There's not a lot of um, high-cost cards showing up, but that's fine. More will show up in the future, probably. Okay. This is a little bit of a problem. Ambush. If Surtur is in the city, he captures the Eternal Flame. If a player controls Surtur's crown, that card enters the city as the villain Surtur and captures the Eternal Flame. Uh, no one owns Surtur's crown, and Surtur is not in the city. Alright, this card is now at um, 13. It's probably going to escape and give them both to Darren Cross, which is a problem. A uh, problem that I don't know how I'm going to deal with. But let's find out. Okay, so I want to take all of this stuff. Um, I want all the guardians for to tr trigger this card. Actually, if I can just get enough shards to fight Darren Cross once, that gives me the weapons. Okay, so which of these cards do I think is better? Er, get the recruit early, and then get the attack, I think. Okay, okay, digest. You need to have the printed number of cards in your victory pile. I thought it was bystanders previously. So this card is a lot better than I thought it was, but currently doesn't really do anything. Master Strike, Darren Cross double crosses each player, then he transforms. Well, no one has any doubles other than zero. Wait, does double cross work for zeros? Double cross isn't in this book yet, is it? No, it's not. Um, I think double cross works for zeros. It reveals their own discards one of their highest cost doubles. Yes, so zeros do count, so each side needs to discard a zero. This isn't doing anything, and this isn't going to do anything for a while, so. I'd like to save these for the other side. I could take Cauldron of the Cosmos. It currently is just a one recruit card, which is kind of shit, but one recruit draw card is better. Um, it being a recruit card helps me recruit five cost things. I forgot Darren Cross used to transform, right? Um, okay. This isn't a very good henchman. Alright, to recruit, I may discard a card, and if I do draw a card, I have six recruit. Which is perfect, because I can buy both of these. Bridge Conqueror 3. Fight K, I want to be here. Okay, that's a good one.
Okay, I would like a KO this turn. Um, so I should do this first. But it doesn't matter, everything in here is gray. Okay, I'm going to recruit this for five. Uh, whenever you recruit a hero that costs five or more, this turn reveal the top card here of your deck and you may KO it. Take worthy challenge. Having an attack card makes it less likely that I actually get enough recruit to recruit a five cost card. Wait, I don't have three recruit. What am I talking about? I'm gonna fight this for three. Fight reveal the top two cards of your deck, put any that cost two or less into your hand, and put the rest back in any order. Okay, and I'll take a sidekick with that two recruit. It's boom boom. Uh, there's no more guardians in there, huh? Well, I'll start by fighting this for four, because the bridge is empty. Fight KO one of your heroes. KO this. Could take a Thor just as a two attack card. Like that's my options are this an officer or a sidekick or any recruit. Um, I don't think I need an officer because I have two of these cards, two gritty scavengers. Nothing else I recruited has recruit on it, but. Gritty Scavenger is good enough for that, I think. I might just take a two attack card. This works better on the right. But I also will probably want to recruit high cost cards on the left too, like high cost rocket recruiting root cards. I'll take this, I think. I don't want this one. Like ha the more high recruit cards I have, the more likely I am to actually get these effects off. And a sidekick. While the back side of a mastermind card is face up. This villain gets plus two attack and escape. Each player discards a card. Okay, so this is the backside. Right? Yeah, this is the backside. Transform version is the backside. Alright, um, I would like a shard. Discard this one. To recruit, I may discard a card to draw a card. Or I could keep these and recruit the... No, I shouldn't recruit that one. I should keep that one for this side. That would give me more attack this turn, but... I think I should just take this. Alright, I got five attack. This gives me a shard. I'm going to save up my shards until I can fight whoever has these weapons. It says size changing text, so this is only at 10. That's still too high to fight. Um, I could fight this. So this card's currently at 7. I fight this for 3. 
Bite, reveal the top two cards of your deck, put any that cost two or less into your hand, put the rest back in any order. And fight, patrol the sewers, if it's empty I get plus two recruit, it isn't. I could recruit this, that would give me six attack, which doesn't do anything. Okay, so I'm going to buy this for three. And a side. Just yet. The side can't reveal a party card, so it would give them a wound to give me plus three attack. Four, seven, ten, eleven. I don't have a tech to size change this. I could just go with seven and not cross dimensional party rampage. Play this first and then boomer and then this that would give me seven to fight you. Which would give me a KO. And also give me an extra card in my victory pile for this digest effect. Or I could do the cross dimensional party rampage and fight both of these for ten. My lose condition is stuff escaping, so keeping the city clear is probably a good idea. Wait, I can't math. This guy would be at 11 if I had a tech, not at 12. Or not at 10. Huh. I should kill both of these. Um, to, I can boomer instead of meltdown, though. I don't know if I want to give this side a wound. I don't feel too threatened. I don't want to give this side a wound. So I'm not going to... I'm going to play this first, so I don't cross dimensional party rampage. This one I'm playing Boomer. So three attack and put it on the bottom of the sidekick stack. So I have seven attack. I'm going to play this for one recruit, and then I'm going to fight Darren Cross for seven. Fight K one of your heroes. I'm going to KO this one. Or should I, with the party for stuff? I'm going to KO this one. So now I have the digest, so two recruit and then digest two, draw a card. Okay, I'm going to recruit Destructive Feast for five. And whenever I recruit a hero that costs five or more, the turn will be the top card of your deck and you may KO it. Alright, Scheme Twist. Each villain simultaneously charges two spaces, and then play another card from the villain deck. Alright. Three attack this turn. Let me fight one of these, which will probably get me enough recruit to buy this. Um, so maybe I'll discard a... Shield agent. Pretty scavenger. Or I could just simply not discard a thing and not draw. I would like to keep this moving. I'm going to discard a shield agent. See, it didn't matter. I knew that was there. So when I draw a new hand of cards at the end of this turn, I draw an extra card. I'm going to start by buying Trigger Happy. So it gets into the shuffle. I'm going to fight this for three. The top two cards of your deck, put any that cost two or less into your hand, put the rest back in any order. One extra recruit.
ambush. Each player has a waking nightmare. The demon bear captures one of the heroes discarded this way. That is the lowest cost. The demon bear gains plus attack equal to that hero's cost. Discard a non-gray hero from your hand. So this is a gray hero. So I need to discard one of these and it will get it. So it captures this. It gets plus attack equal to its cost. Fight the player of your choice gains that hero. Now I can give this to the right side. That's pretty nice. Draw two. Um, do I want to get this rampage or not? That would let me fight this. I think fighting this is good. It'll let me get this on the right side. On the for the cost of giving this side a wound. I think that's worth it. I'll play this first. One recruit, digest two, draw a card. Uh, cross dimensional party rampage. Seven, this is five, and then cross dimensional party rampage. This side gets a wound, and I gain three attack. And I'm gonna fight this for eight, and fight the player of my choice gains this hero. This should be seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, this helps me recruit things. I don't think I need help recruiting things anymore. This could be pretty decent. I am KOing a lot of things though. I'd like get it, I'd like to get more ranged for these range triggers that I have. I might take both of these. Or this and this. Let me buy this first. Master Strike, each player discards an instinct hero or size changing hero or gains a wound. Well, uh, no. And then Yellow Jacket transforms. Okay, I can have five attack this turn, which doesn't really help me all that much. So I'm going to play this first. Discard this to draw a card. And then I'll play this. Discard this to draw a card. And I'll play this to attack, and I gain a shard for each other guardians here. I play this turn, so that's two. And I'll play this to attack, and I gain three shards. Five attack, six recruit. I can fight shrink spearments this turn, because this is at four, four, three, eleven. Um, that requires me to spend all of my shards, but I think it's worth it so that Mr. Cross over here does not get these villainous weapons. So I'm fighting you for 11. So I gain these two artifacts as artifacts, um, and fight a hero in the HQ loses all size changing abilities and gains size changing tech this turn. I'm going to buy this card this turn, so I should give it this one size changing text. So this is at two. I don't have a lot of strength. I think I have one strength card. The, um, the 
this one. But it is a Guardians card, and the more Guardians cards I have, the better Trigger Happy becomes. So I'm going to buy it anyways. I think I'm just buying every single Guardians card. Okay, I'm going to buy this. And then KO it. With this. So I want to put... I think I want an Agent on top. I don't need... I don't need this many. I don't need so much recruit that I need uh, to keep an agent. I'm gonna buy this for six. And whenever I recruit a hero that costs five or more this turn, you reveal the top card of your deck and you may KO it. Two extra recruit, I'm gonna buy a sidekick. Very lucky with um, scheme twists. Not gonna complain. I'm gonna draw two. On attack, when I draw a new hand of cards at the end of the turn, I draw an extra card, and then I gain two shards, and I may spend shards to get recruit this turn. That's that's an interesting ability, but I don't think I'm ever going to do that. To recruit, I'm gonna discard this to draw. All right, I have six recruit. Buy this for three. So I just want to buy a one recruit draw card. Um, it's better on the right because it can trigger the range triggers I have. If I don't buy this, I'm probably just buying a new recruit or a sidekick. I don't have anything that synergizes with this. I should I should leave this for the right. Mm. I buy it. I was hoping for a five cost to come up for my five cost buying stuff. This is not a good hero set for party Thor, I think. I don't think there's enough high cost cards. Ambush, Crotus captures a bystander. Put an even numbered hero on the bottom of the hero deck. Moonlight, Crotus gets plus two attack. Moonlight is odds? Yeah. Okay, I want that one. Uh, probably just putting this one on the bottom. Top three cards of your deck, draw one, put the rest back in any order. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine attack. Fight three things. Wait. Don't play this one yet. One, two, one, two, one. Okay, I'm gonna start by fighting this for three. Fight reveal top two cards of your deck, put any that cost two or less into your hand, put rest back in any order. Then three attack. I'm gonna fight this for three. Same deal. Reveal top two cards of your deck, put any that cost two or less into your hand, put the rest back in any order. Okay. I don't know what I was hoping to happen here. Somehow get a four cost card? I don't think I could have done that. I'm gonna fight this before this uh, triggers Moonlight. When you rest the spy standard, each player with the most victory points draws a card. Your VP includes the spy standard. Uh, I think the right side has the most, but I'm gonna count anyways, just to double check, just to make sure. Left side has eight. And the right side has 16. Yeah, so the right side draws a card. Uh, I can give the left side a wound to kill this.
This will escape if a scheme twist shows up. I'm very... I'm doing very well on... Like, escapes, though, so... I don't think I need to give this side a wound. You don't have any party things in here, right? No. None of these are party. Okay. Yeah, I think I won't play this card. Wait, did I play a range this turn? Oh, I didn't play a range this turn. Never mind. I'm just going to fight this for three. And reveal the top two cards of my deck, but I'm going to cost two or less into my hand and put the rest back in any order. Alright, am I taking Reckless Rescue Attempts? I don't think I need more Recruit. I think I'm just going to take Sea Future Timelines as a two attack card that triggers range stuff. And a sidekick. Once per turn, return a zero cost card from your discard pile to your hand. Once per turn, you get Streets Conqueror 1. Uh, I guess I can return a zero cost to my hand. This is only at 5. So this doesn't. So this doesn't help, so I guess I'm returning this. I'm gonna fight this for 5, fight KO one of my heroes. And with two recruit, I'm going to buy a new recruit. I think I'm at the point where I want more consistency, so I'm just going to take new recruits instead of sidekicks from now on. Streets Conquer 2. Ambush the Ferris Wolf moves forward to the rooftops, pushing other villains forward as normal. I still don't have five costs in the city. I'm going to start with this. Three recruit. Put another card on top of my deck. Then two attack. Reveal the top card of your deck. Cost zero. Discard it. And you get plus two attack. Then one recruit. Draw a card. I'm going to fight you for four. Uh, if this is... If a 5 cost comes out after this, I can recruit it to maybe get a KO. Um, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 out of 14. 7 out of 15. I'm just going to recruit these two. Ambush, this moves to the rooftops, pushing other villains forward as normal. Uh, one, two, three, four, and I gain a shard to recruit. I might just KO some wounds. Once per turn, return a zero cost card from your discard pile to your hand. I don't have any wounds in here, unfortunately. I'm just going to heal these wounds this turn. Attack, draw a card. Oh, I get this. Because I did. I will have played a two cost and a four cost this turn. That's cool. I don't have any recruit for the other stuff, unfortunately. For this. This is two attack. This is two attack. Reveal top card of your deck. If it costs zero, discard it and get plus two attack. Four. If you played a four cost and a two cost this turn, you get plus two attack. And no one's in the bank, so I'm going to fight Darren Cross for eight. 
fight. Each hero in the HQ that has no size changing abilities gains size changing for one of its hero classes. This mastermind transforms. So this has size changing strength, this has size changing strength, this has size changing ranged, and I can either choose ranged or covert for this, but I'll choose ranged because I have ranged. So I could buy this for one. Um, also fight you for six. I'm gonna fight this for six. Uh, this hero loses its size changing and its size changing, changing attack this turn. Is this permanent? This doesn't say for one turn. Like this says for one turn. A size changing tech this turn. This does not. I'm gonna look this up. Marvel Legendary. What is this card called? Shrinking Research Budgets. Google has not helped me. Um, Google hasn't helped me. Um, I'm going to say that yes, this is permanent, just because a card from literally the same set says this turn, and this one does not say this turn. So I'm going to put something on these to uh, make marbles. No, not marbles. Let me... this one's... I'm just going to stick these on here. So this goes away. So this lost its size changing ability and then gained size changing tech for this turn. Or wait, this... This is temporary. The losing all size changing abilities then... Ah. I'm gonna say the losing all part is permanent and the gaining is temporary. I don't fucking know. Someone, someone tell me how this works. Because Google has failed me. But uh, I'm going to say that these size changes are permanent, and the one that I replaced with tech loses it. I can recruit this for one. I will recruit this for one, because I want to keep the HQ moving for more five cost cards. It is currently Moonlight, so he gets plus three attack. Okay. I'm going to start with one attack draw card, then two recruits, discard a card to draw a card, then I return a zero cost from my discard pile to my hand, um, then two recruits, discard a card to draw a card, two recruits, discard a card to draw a card, one attack, I gain, a, I draw a new card at the end of the turn. Two attack, and I gain a shard for each other guardians here. I play this turn, which is four. And two recruit, or two attack, I mean, I gain a shard for each other guardians player hero. I play this turn, which is five. All right. Uh, you're at eight. I'm going to spend two shards. Fight Yellow Jacket for eight. 
Okay, one of your heroes with a recruit icon. If the bank is empty, move a villain to the bank. This mastermind transforms. Alright, do I fight you? I can't fight Darren if I do that. I can fight both of these with all ten of these shards. I should just save them though, right? Just save the shards. Yeah, just save the shards to fight the mastermind. Seems simple to me. Okay, if I give out a wound, I will have 11 attack this turn. Need to spend 6 to fight this. Okay, let me fight both of these. I like that idea, actually. Okay, so I'm going to start with this. 3 recruit, put this on top of my deck. And three recruit to attack. I'm going to recruit this. Wait. This doesn't cost five or more this turn. Aha, this costs three because of the size changing that I decided was permanent because that sounds like. That sounds wrong now that I think about it, but I decided that that's how I'm going to play it for this game. Um. Someone please correct me if you've got like official rulings, because Google has failed me. But this does not cost five, this costs three. So I can't reveal the top card of my deck and KO it. That also means that I don't get enough attack for this. To fight both of these. Unless I make it sunlight. I'm gonna buy this for three. It is now Sunlight. Uh, three attack, and this side gets a wound because it doesn't have a party side, so I gain three more attack. Um, I'm going to fight Nisarath by spending three recruit alongside three attack. So fight, KO one of my heroes. Uh, wait. Oh, I have this. Never mind. And I'm going to fight this for three. Fight reveal the top two cards of your deck, put in a cost two or less into your hand, put the rest back in any order. Buy this for I'm gonna buy this for two. Attack, I gain an extra card for the turn. Two attack, I can KO a card from my hand or discard pile if I do gain a shard. Um, I can return a zero cost from my discard pile to my hand. I guess that's this one. I get two shards. I'm going to fight Darren Cross for eight. Fight! Each other player shuffles a covert, tech, or size changing card from their hand or discard pile into the hero deck. Does this card count as having size changing? Because I've. Oh, wait, not that one. This one. Because I bought it when it... Uh, the more I see this, the more I think that the size changing shouldn't be permanent. But um, 
Why wasn't it clarified that it was for one turn then? I guess this has size changing on it, because I said it was permanent, so I guess shuffle it into the hero deck. And then the Mastermind transforms. Uh, I didn't play any tech cards this turn, so I can't fight that. Two recruit, I'm going to buy a new recruit. this first. One recruit, digest two, draw a card. Two attack, reveal top card of your deck, cost zero, discard it, and gain. Two attack. Five attack, I'm going to fight this for four. Fight K, one of your heroes. Six recruit, I'm going to buy this for three. To buy this for one, and I'm going to buy a new recruit. Fight, put this into your discard pile as a Surter's Crown artifact. Escape if Surter was holding the Eternal Flame, say Ragnarok has come. KO each Guardians of Asgard hero from the HQ, and each player gains two wounds. Start with one attack, draw a card. Okay, two recruits. I can discard a card to draw a card. And then once per turn or turn, zero cost from your discard pile to your hand. Two recruits, discard a card to draw a card. One recruit, draw a card. This is two attack and I gain two shards. Uh, Yellow Jacket is at 8, so I'm going to spend 8 to fight him. Oh. Fight! If the bank is empty, each other player chooses a villain worth 2 victory points or more from their victory pile. You choose one of these villains to enter the bank. The bank is not empty. The Mastermind transforms. Okay, so Darren is at 14. I don't have 14. Um, you're at 7. I'm just gonna save my charts. I'm gonna buy this for four. I'm gonna buy a new recruit. Skip twist. Each villain simultaneously charges forward two spaces and play another card from the villain deck. Ambush. Kratos captures a bystander. Put an even combered hero on the bottom of the hero deck. I think I'm gonna put this one. Alright, to play this I need to put a card from my hand on top of my deck, then two attack, reveal the top card of my deck, if it costs zero, discard it, and I get plus two attack, then two recruit, reveal the top card of the villain deck, if it's a villain, rescue a bystander, otherwise KO a bystander from the bystander's deck, reveal the top card of your deck, cost zero, KO it. Uh, is it Moonlight? No. Fight you for three. Uh, press the bus here and choose one. Draw a card now or draw an extra card when you draw an hero card. the end turn. I'm draw a card now. Then one recruit, draw a card. Two attack. I'm going to buy this for six. That gives me three more attack. And I reveal the top card of my deck and I may KO it. I have seven attack. I'm going to fight this for six, which gives me it as an artifact. I'm going to buy this card. Ambush, sunlight. Uh, it's currently sunlight, right? Yeah, sunlight's even. Um, 
So each player reveals a strength hero or gains a wound. So this side reveals a strength hero and this side reveals a strength hero. Easy. All right, one attack and I draw an extra card at the end of the turn. One attack, same shit. Two attack. KO a card from my hand or discard pile and if I do gain a shard. Another one. Uh, once per turn, I return a zero cost card from my discard pile to my hand. Then two attack, and I gain four shards. At ten attack, I'm going to spend all 17 shards to bring me to 27 attack. And I'm going to get some victory points before I murder Mr. Cross over here. So fight you for seven, fight you for four, fight you for six, and fight Mr. Cross for eight. And I won. Uh, this deck was very good. This card is insane if you buy, like, mostly Rocket Raccoon cards. Or mostly Guardians of the Galaxy cards. This, like, this is so good. I've never had Trigger Happy be this good before because I've never had more than one Guardians in the lineup before. Uh, let's count some victory points. I'm going to guess the left side got a lot more than the right side. The left side got 49. And the right side got 40. Well, maybe not. The right side also did pretty good. Um, I don't think Party Thor is as good in this lineup. I might have just gotten really unlucky with the um, high cost cards all being toward the bottom. I didn't see a single rare, uh, for one thing. Yeah, all the rares are in the bottom half of the deck, which didn't help. And I also got pretty unlucky that some, a lot of the five cost and the six cost cards were just also kind of low. But yeah, even with that problem, it worked pretty well. I had a, like a lot of high attack cards. Like I had four attack cards. I had three attack cards, which I could reasonably make a six attack card. This card, a lot of the time, turned into a four attack card. This card wasn't always a five attack card, but some of the times it was a five attack card. This just worked out pretty well too, even with the, I feel like, weaker showing from Party Thor. Yeah, this game was fun. I, I liked this deck a lot. This deck was so much... This deck was so cool. This never came up. Oh wait, it could have come up this time, because someone was in the streets this turn. So it could have come up this turn. I could have gotten one extra attack. It didn't matter, but I could have. Um, and there were still 20 cards left in the villa deck. That's because I got really lucky with the scheme twists. Um, only two twists came out so far. Oh yeah, this would have been a this would have been a spicy chain if there was a lot of villains in the city. But I was also doing a decent job just keeping the city clear. Huh. Yeah, this went good. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.